Now this video is a long time coming. I've been meaning to do it. I've been putting it off, but I cannot put it off any longer. I cannot ignore it anymore. I don't know what Shea Gilgis Alexander's ceiling is, but I know whatever I thought it was before was 100% wrong. This man is playing at such a high level. He's got the OKC Thunder looking like a legit team in the West. Maybe not a finals contender yet, but he is single-handedly almost making them a destination for free agents. Uh, we haven't even seen what they look like with Chet Holmgren, who's missed this whole season and is going to be out this whole season with a foot injury. But Shea, Josh Giddy, Lou Dort, Jalen Williams, uh, Mark Williams, they are playing out of their minds. And Shea, the level that he is playing at, has been absolutely astonishing. I thought it was a mistake when the Clippers gave him up in the Paul George trade in the first place. Just with how good he looked in the in the playoff series he had for them as a rookie. I was like, man, this dude doesn't seem scared at the moment. He seems really poised. I don't know if I would just give that up along with everything else. But the Thunder were smart to grab him because they grabbed a cornerstone in the franchise before anyone else could realize that they had a cornerstone in the franchise. This season, SGA is averaging 31 points a game on 51% shooting from the field, four and a half rebounds, close to six assists, and a steal and a block. That's night in, night out. He is a first-time All-Star this year. It is much deserved. I think, honestly, there's a case to make that he should have been starting, but beggars, beggars can't be choosers. I'm just happy he's in the All-Star game because this is recognition that he sorely is owed. He has had multiple performances this season of 40-point games. He's had huge outbursts. He's had huge facilitating games. And the thing that's so unique about him is he is not out here splashing 15 three attempts a game. He, tonight, against the Portland Trailblazers, had another monster performance. But one of the things that's most notable about it was that he only took one, one three-point attempt, and he missed it. He was 0 for 1 from 3, but against the Blazers, he had 44 points on 13 of 16 shooting, 7 assists, and 18 of 19 from the free throw. I read something that said he is the only player to have 44 points on over 80% shooting ever. And on top of that, he joined an elusive club uh, this season. He has, he has these, these are the players with a thousand points, 50 plus steals, and 50 plus blocks. Shea Gilgis Alexander. That's the whole list. That's the list right there. And not only does he have a thousand plus points, he has 1500 plus points. The man is putting on a show night in and night out. And the thing that, that really I wanted to talk about is I don't know what that ceiling is going to be. Like, I can easily envision him as the best player on a title team. Like, if Chet Holmgren came back healthy and they, with their treasure trove of draft picks, decided to either trade for a certified star already, like Carl Anthony Towns, perhaps, to pair up with... With the scoring and the playmaking that Giddy and SGA provide, the defense that Lou Dort provides, the diamond in the rough that they seem to have, just endless, endless players who fill these roles, who are just talented beyond their experience levels and just know what to do. Like, that team is, is so smart from a basketball standpoint. They spoiled LeBron's big night the other day when he passed Kareem's record. And, like, on top of that, like... They were ruthless. Like, they paid respects, but, like, they looked like they were like, we're ruining this night. Like, we're beating you tonight. Like, this is not, we're not rolling over here. And I think a lot of that starts with SGA. And I know a lot of people like to say that, that this turning point for him really started when he had that one season with Chris Paul in Oklahoma City. But I gotta be honest, I think he might have just had this in him all along. Because it is it is astonishing to watch the poise that he plays with for, you know, just how young he is. He is so talented. He's so good at making sure that he is not rushed or forced into things. And I think all of that has a huge impact on the entire Thunder team. So I'm not going to sit here and say they're going to be a home court playoff team this year or a finals contender. But you could tell me that they get Chet Holmgren. They draft a couple more high-impact rookies with this treasure chest, or they trade for for a star or two to complement. 
and they could very quickly be looking at like a Cleveland West type of scenario. Like they could be the Cavaliers next year, maybe. Like if they if say they make a big trade, say they make a they draft a couple good players. Like they could do both, honestly, with all the assets that they have. We could very quickly find the Thunder in that same conversation of like, man, this is a young, talented team that just pushed all their chips in and said, hey, let's go get a young star because you know our our cornerstone players are. Well, I can't really say they're they're old. SGA is a little older. He's already signed an extension. But, like, I thought that was going to make him a popular trade candidate. Like, I thought people were going to be trying to pry him away from OKC just because he's already kind of a little bit older than, like, the other cornerstones of the team. But he's too good. I He's untouchable as far as I'm concerned in trades and stuff. I don't think it... I don't think OKC would even answer the phone. And like it it's so interesting to think about in the context of, of how crazy the NBA is going with trades now too. Like you look at the trade package that Kevin Durant pa- uh, uh, brought in, return whatever. The return on the Kevin Durant trade was four first round picks, two pick swaps, uh, Mikhail Bridges, Cam Johnson, and I think there's uh, Jay Crowder, and then I think there was one more player too. But like seven or eight assets and that's a direct reflection of the rudy gobert trade and how bloated that was but like the raptors wanted three firsts for og and anobi and that move eventually did not happen how many firsts would a team be willing to give up for sga at the level he is playing at right now like i can't even imagine what the number of assets it would be to like start that conversation because everyone has seen just how good he is so i don't know what what the Oklahoma City strategy is, but my best guess is that they're going to just continue trying to play as hard as they can and win as many games as they can this year. Credit as well to Mark Dagnall. Uh, he has been a exceptional coach for them. He has got them executing and playing hard on both ends, and, you know, that's a team that could have really easily decided that they wanted to pack it in as soon as they heard that Chet was hurt. It's a lot of talk of like, are they going to just bench Shea so he and just say he's got like a foot strain or a, like a hamstring or something so they can lose games and try to go get Wimby Am- Wim- uh, Victor Wimby Am- Why am I struggling with that? Uh, Victor Von Doom. Like, I don't, I don't think that was ever in the cards because I think they're just naturally too talented of a team. I don't know, like, if they could just tank. So. I'm really curious to see what the Thunder are going to do in this offseason. I think they'll be a play-in team or a, a back half, like, 7-8 seed. Well, I guess that would be play-in. <laughs> I guess they'll be, uh, I would say, probably play-in area, maybe 6 seed, depending on what happens with some of these other teams that are, you know, dealing with injury questions. But I think next year is going to be the year. A big part of that is going to be a desire to play with Shea Gilgis-Alexander because, yes, he had 44 points tonight, but he only took 16 shots. He's getting to the free throw line. He's not out here like volume shooting like I hate to say it because it's it's feels played out at this point, but like a like a Harden or a Trey Young or one of these like Luca. I mean, supporting cast and all that I understand is different, but like those volume shooters just ruins the flow of a game when you have other teammates that are that are talented enough to contribute. And Shea being able to score 44 points on 16 shot attempts in the flow of the game by being able to work the mid-range, get free throws, and just make the smart decisions, that's a huge benefit for a team to have. And I don't think he's going to end up in any like MVP conversations, anything like that uh, right away. I think if the Thunder make a big move or a splashy move and they start uh, hot next year too, I think we might be in the realm of having that discussion where he might be an all-star starter. Or he might be an MVP candidate. And I'm just curious, uh, what, what anyone watching this, what you guys think his ceiling might be, what you expect for him. If you think he might be, you know, an MVP of the league one year, or he might be a, a champion, or multiple-time champion, or finals MVP, any of that. Like, what, do you, what are your expectations for Shea? Because it feels like everyone I talk to has different thoughts. So I would love to hear yours in the comments, uh, or just the thoughts on the Thunder in general. Please let me know. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy the weekend.